Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise God. We can start. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, for this wonderful this morning you have given us to continue to study on your word, to learn your word, to know your word better. Lord, to also have a relationship with you, not any relationship, but an intimate relationship with you, Lord. And Lord, help us to understand your love more and more, that we may tap into this love. And this love is always available for us, Lord. We just need to believe it, and then we can receive it. Lord of our Father, today as we're learning your word, you teach us, you guide us into all truth. And you make this teaching extremely simple and easy for us to understand. Because whoever is listening right now on Zoom and those who will listen it recorded on YouTube, that touched and the life is completely transformed. And Lord, as the life is transformed, they can go out and preach the gospel to their friends, family, relatives, and they also touch. And Lord, we thank you today because as we're learning your word, you are the one who's confirming the word with signs and with wonders. We thank you and we praise you in the glorious and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise thank the you. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So, now we were going, we were at 2 Corinthians 10, 3. I'll just read that very quickly. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. So, I'll read it. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So we all, we were learning yesterday, we all, okay, um, when we go through, okay, trials, tribulations, now, in that trial, in that tribulation, I should open my mouth, speak the word. And when I speak this word, now that's called, I'm fighting 
against those thoughts. No, my battlefield is not physical or carnal or flesh. We live in this world, we dwell in this world, we all we all do things in this world, but our war is not flesh. Our war is in the spirit. And this war is against thoughts. You know, okay. There's a scripture in um, Hebrews, I think so. I'll just uh, read it. Hebrews. Should I put it? No, no, it's okay. I Because I'm not sure if this scripture... Okay, okay, praise God. Okay, there's a scripture, okay, it's saying that a war is not a physical, but a war, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but a warfare, war is against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world. So, our fight is not against physical things, physical people because people okay you know god you know we have dominion over the earth right yes but we don't have dominion over people people have the freedom of choice that's what we were learning yesterday deuteronomy 13 19 people have the freedom of choice it's whether it's whether they want to choose life death blessing cursing it's not how we should not force them, but we should only preach the gospel, convict them, and show them the way if they want to do it. We should never force them. And that's the, the nature of God. God never forces us also. So, praise the Lord. So, when you see this 2 Corinthians 10 3, it says that. We walk in the flesh, we live in this world, but our, you know, in, even in the scripture, it says, in the Bible, it says, our war is, war is against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world. So if it's saying darkness of this world, does it mean physical darkness? When I'm in a room, no. the light is closed and there's no light. Is that darkness? Is it no. talking about that darkness? No. So what does that mean? No, if it's not talking about physical darkness, it's talking about spiritual darkness. Because our war is also spiritual. Praise God. You know, when you see in the book of Ma Matthew 4, yeah, Matthew 4, I think so. Uh, after the three temptations, Jesus, okay, went, okay, to the other side and he was preaching. Okay, I think it was the other side. Okay, he, uh, of uh, unto Galilee, and he was preaching and teaching them. And it clearly says in the scriptures that those people who sat in darkness. Those people sat in darkness. They were living in darkness. It doesn't mean they really sat in darkness physically. No, they were living in darkness. And what do you mean darkness? Darkness is not. Physical darkness. Darkness is where there is evil in me. So darkness is called evil. When there is evil in somebody. Praise the Lord. So, and what is the light? What do you mean by the word light? Good. Light. Light means anything which is in line with God's word. That is called light. Okay. Yes. Good is okay. Yeah. But uh, there can be two kinds of things which are good. Normal physical things are good. But good things, uh, you know, we think good things are just normal things which happen daily, which are good. So if I do something which is very good and that means I'm good. No, good means anything that is in line with the word of God. And that is called the light. And that's why now, because we have experienced the light, you know, that's why Jesus is saying, come walk with me because I am the light. And because we are already, you know, how do you walk with the in the light? Does anybody know? Can you just say, I'm walking in the light, I'm walking in the light, I'm walking with Jesus? No. 
No, so how do you know that? To the word of God. No. By your accent. Okay. Okay, okay. a person might be saying, um, I know God. But he might not be applying that word. Okay. I'll give you the answer. The answer is a person who is walking in the light is a, a person who is walking in love. Because the scripture clearly says God is love, right? Yes. Yes. So if God is love, if I'm operating in love, means whom I'm operating with? God. So if I want to walk in the light, it is only through love. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So when we see in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, we'll go back there. 2 Corinthians. Should I put it? Okay, you can put it. While you put, I'll read it. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So when you say we walk in the light, means now when we say we are walking in the light, we are there. Okay? When the devil comes with thoughts of hatred, saying, no, I'm not ready to accept you. Because if I'm walking with love, means I'm walking with Jesus. And Jesus is saying, I am the light. So it means I'm walking with the light. And when you're saying I'm walking in the light, any thought it can be which is of darkness, hatred, fear, bondage, anger, anything. A true person who's walking in the light will know, oh, I know how to fight. You know, does this ever happen to you, okay? That when you are in, okay, school, and the teacher said you have to do this, and it's so, so easy, you already know it. Does that happen to you? Sometimes, yes, right? Even it happens to me. Uh, the teacher says you have to do this. I know how to do that. And the teachers go on teaching it, but I already know. You know, that's how it is with a person who's walking with the light. A person who's walking with the light, he's saying, oh, Jesus already taught me. I know how to fight you. I don't have to give access to you. But a person in darkness, it, he will say, oh, 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 he will accept the thought. Because he's already on the side of the devil. Praise God. Okay, let's put that 2 Corinthians 10, 3. One minute. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. Two Corinthians 10, 3. Okay, you can read it, you know. For two, we walk in the flesh. We do not walk after the flesh. Okay. So, a person, okay, who's in darkness, you know what happens to him? He will never fight. You know, those who fight are the Christians. Okay, I'll repeat that once again. Those who fight are the Christians. Because the Christians are the ones which are in the opposite team. Now, example, okay? If I'm on the devil's side, okay? Now, will I have to fight? No, right? Because I'm already on his side. I'm accepting him. So why do I need to fight? But if, but if I'm on God's side, now do I have to fight? Yes. Yes. Yes, because the kingdom of darkness is contradicting to which kingdom I am in. And which yes. and I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior not of your kingdom. I'm a warrior of God's kingdom. So I'll definitely have to fight. How do we fight? Our fight is not physical, our fight is spiritual. Praise God. 
so yesterday we were learning on a cell called cleansing cell right yes yes so yeah so when you say you know we can remember what a person said to us two two, two days ago okay two years ago sorry two years ago but we can't even remember what what we just heard yesterday in the bible reading yes and because for you that is more important now those words become toxic to your body now example and you know, okay now when you have a device okay any device or your device what you're sitting in front of if it is not waterproof will it be able to when you put it in the water will it be able to will you be able to use it never never right why because that device is not designed for water right in the same way it is we are not designed for those words which are contradicting to the word of god we are not designed for them and that's why those words are toxic to our body because we are not designed for us god never created us to accept those words Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What did God design us? God designed us to always have the knowledge of good, the knowledge of the word of God, and to speak that knowledge day and night. To meditate on it day and night. Not one day, not two day, not three day, not four day. All throughout my life. And when I do it all throughout my life, now that's called everlasting life, and this everlasting life starts on earth and it continues in heaven. Praise God! You know we were learning on the four four points of everlasting life. I gave you, remember? I'll just repeat them. What is everlasting life? Does not have to happen when you are dead and gone. First point. Second point. It is when you are living this life in Christ on earth. third point it is life of abundance it is a victorious life and a life of prosperity and the fourth point is everything of god in you is everlasting life life of love life of joy and peace it is the lord thank you jesus so okay god created us to to experience words which are in line with god's word and that's why you know when you say that tree what was that tree called which adam ate from adam and eve ate the knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so god only created us for the knowledge of good you know if you if if you example okay you were there at adam's time you committed sin adam never committed sin okay you go to adam and say oh look i have pain he will say pain what is pain I don't even know what is pain, because God did not design us for that, right? But because yes. we have committed the sin, we have got the knowledge of, and that's why it says knowledge of good and evil. Not only good, God created us only for the knowledge of good, but now we got the knowledge of good and evil. The evil knowledge is the knowledge. from darkness from the kingdom of this world and the knowledge of god is coming from the word of god and this knowledge of evil that's what i need to fight against and that's what adam did he never accepted the knowledge of evil he only accepted the knowledge of good but when he committed sin now his senses got activated and his faith sense got deactivated in the beginning before they ate the fruit it's not they they didn't have physical senses example i'll give an example to explain that okay so as a person is deaf does it mean he doesn't have a ear no he has a ear but that ear doesn't have an ability to hear right Yes. Yes. In the same way, Adam had physical senses. Eve had physical senses. But those 
physical senses didn't have power to dominate them. It was the sixth sense called the faith sense which was dominating them. But once they ate the fruit, now those the sixth sense got deactivated, that faith sense, and now physical senses got activated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's let's read the fourth verse. In a Peter, you know, 2 Corinthians 10, 4. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, see this. For, okay, you can read it, you know. Okay, it's okay, you can read. Okay. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So does anybody know what is that weapon? The word of God. The word of God. So God is saying he has given us a weapon that is mighty. Okay. And this weapon will pull down strongholds. Praise God. So what is a stronghold? A room full of thoughts. Okay. A stronghold is a room full of of thought. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, God is saying he has given us a weapon. Okay, you can write it down if you want. So, God is saying he has given us a weapon that is mighty. And that weapon will pull down the strongholds. And this weapon is called the word of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Do you know how to fight thoughts? Do you know how to fight thoughts? Can you just say, thoughts come in our mind, we, we take a knife, we chop that thought off, and then done. No. That's all, right? No. No. That is not called fighting. I mean, if you're doing that, means you have still not understand what God is trying to tell you. You still did not understand. Because the third verse, it says a weapon, war is not carnal. And here it's saying the weapons of a warfare are also not carnal. So a war is not carnal, or the weapons are not carnal. If anybody is telling you, oh, look, the devil is coming, I have to fight him. I'm, 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 I'm watching a, you know, some. No, it's not only you have to take a physical weapon like a knife and fight. Some people, you know what they do? They watch a movie, they go shopping, and they, they fight the thought like that. If a person is coming and telling you, oh, I, you know, I fight that thought. Okay, I, I, you know what I did? Uh, you know, yesterday this thought was coming. I, I went to, uh, uh, I went to the supermarket. I brought something, and there I forgot it, and it never came back to me. If anybody is telling you that, means it's it's a lie. I'm telling you clearly, the Holy Spirit is telling you clearly, it's a lie. It's not the truth, it's a lie. Because what does the word of God say? The word of God says a war is also spiritual and our weapons of that war is also spiritual. And these weapons are mighty through God, not mighty through man, mighty through God. So who has given us this weapon? Not man. God has given us this weapon. And this weapon is not to fight devils, not to cast demons. What is this weapon for? To pull down strongholds. Because the devil is already defeated. 2,000 years ago. Now, the devil is just attacking us with thoughts. And I have to just pull down those thoughts. That's all I have to do. I don't have to worry about defeating the devil. The devil was defeated 2,000 years ago on the cross by Jesus. When Jesus said, it 
is finished. Everything was finished. The devil had no power. He could now, now you know, because the devil has no power, he cannot come physically or do anything to us. He can only come in form of thoughts, attack us, and we need to fight those thoughts through the weapon, which is mighty through God. We need to pull down those thoughts. God. Thank you. So carnal means physical. Carnal means flesh. Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, praise God. Uh, we can end today's session. Praise the Lord. The time's up. Praise God. Have you understood? Any questions? Anything you want me to repeat? The notes? Nothing. No? Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay, we can do an ending prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. We glorify Amen. you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, our Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this wonderful day, for this glorious day. For this magnificent day you have given us. That we could study your word, to learn your word, to know your word better and better and better lord and lord of father as today anywhere we are anywhere we go at school or at home help us to continuously constantly consistently to meditate on your word to ponder on your word, to learn your word, to search your word, to examine your word, find your word, to consider your word. And to roll the word of God, the roll this matter of the word of God in our mind, day and night, day and night, day and night. Never to forget what you have done for us on the cross. And help us, Lord, to take the word of God and to fight against the thoughts which are contradicting to the word of God. To stay in the light, to operate in love, and to fight any thought which is coming from the kingdom of darkness, of hatred, of bitterness, of anger, of fear, of bondage. We find this, we cast this thought into the depth of the sea in Jesus' name. Lord, we lose that we are anointed, we are protected we are blessed and lord we can do what you are telling us to do all throughout this day and we thank you and we praise you in the glorious and mighty name of our lord jesus christ amen amen amen, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, we can pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.